Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about DNFing books. DNF stands for did not finish. I want to talk about why we do that. What's the most common reason why someone won't finish a book? The pros and cons of DNFing, the ethical things. Is it okay to rate a book that you didn't finish? How, what does that do to an author? Is it fair to them? What's my opinion? Do I DNF? All that stuff in this video. What's good, BookTube? Thanks for hanging out with me again today. It's Theo, Rekindled Reader. Let's go ahead and get right into it. DNFing, is it okay? Do I DNF? What spurred this video? What happened to me recently was I picked up a book and I started flipping through it and very quickly after three, four, five pages, I realized the writing style wasn't clicking for it for me and so I put it down. I don't know if I'll go back and pick it up, but for now, I'm just gonna put it down. It wasn't clicking. And I feel like one of the biggest reasons and a reason why someone would put down a book quicker or more quickly than maybe other reasons is the writing style itself. Very quickly, you can pick up on if an author is gonna work for you, if a particular type of prose or writing style or whatever is gonna click with you. And sometimes it just doesn't. And that comes off the page immediately when you pick up a book. Right away, the writing is at the forefront, you can tell. Is it hard to read? Is it written in a particular type of style that, that you, you know, doesn't flow very well for you? Does it use vo vocabulary that you're not used to? Is it written in, in a different style? First person, second person, third person? Is it epistolary format? Um, you know, is it a frame narrative? Is someone telling their story? And it's sort of, you know, there's a lot of reasons why the writing style might not work. For me, it's usually the actual prose. I'm not a prose snob, but every now and then um, I find a book, particularly with really choppy, fragmented, um, a little bit jarring prose, and that is what doesn't really work for me. I like more flowing, um, you know, wording, and and that's kind of what I've encountered recently with a couple books where I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. Sometimes I'm pleasantly surprised. Other times I have to put it put it down. Another reason that we we put books down sometimes is certain tropes. Sometimes you encounter a trope that you just really don't like. Maybe there's an orphan farm boy that goes on a quest. Maybe there's a chosen one, dark lord, right? Good versus evil. Maybe there's a, you know, the old wise mentor, damsel in distress. These are all like tropes. Maybe there's a love triangle. Maybe you hate that kind of stuff. If you encounter a trope that you really don't like, that's a very common reason to put down a book. Sometimes maybe also themes, certain themes that you don't really like in your books or themes that are too in your face or allegory in a book. These are all reasons to put down a book too. A good reason is triggers. Sometimes you just open a book and you get to a part and there's sexual abuse or uh, animal cruelty or grotesque, you know, violence and gore, just certain things that you just don't want to read about. And that is a totally okay reason to also put down a book. The most common reason I think that people DNF books is you just start to lose interest. Uninteresting characters, uninteresting world, uninteresting story, right? The story, everything about the book, whatever it may be, is just boring to you and you can't get immersed and enjoy. You're just not invested. That happens to me every now and then. And I feel usually that doesn't trigger me to put down a book. I just get to the end and think, okay, like, I don't really know what the point of that was. I didn't, you know, I, if I don't read another book like this again, or if I don't continue this series, I don't really care. And I actually try not to DNF books in the middle of a book. I try to just finish, if especially if it's fantasy, that's what I read the most of. There are definitely more, most fantasy is part of a series. And so for me, I try to finish the book and maybe just won't finish or continue with the series itself. If book one is any indication, I'm probably not, you know, and if I'm bored, I'm probably not going to be more invested or more interested in books two, three, four, so on. That's not always the case. And we'll talk a little bit about what you might be missing out on when you do DNF a book. Now, the pros and cons of DNFing books. Number one, the most common pro is you save time. Time is awfully precious. We only have so much time to read, particularly if you're busy, if you're, if you have family or kids or work or whatever, it's only, you know, friends, other hobbies. Reading is very precious time for me and for a lot of you. So, you know, I don't want to waste time reading things I don't like, continuing with a book that I'm pretty sure I won't like, um, reading things that I, I, you know, have to suffer through, reading things that feel like work. Save your time. Time is precious. That's a number one pro. A con, actually, of DNFing is some books actually ramp up. 
And so if you DNF a book too early, you might be missing out on some really important context. Maybe the author is trying to round out or flesh out a character. You just haven't given certain characters enough time. There are certain books where the ending makes the journey or there are reveals that make the journey worthwhile and you just don't quite give it enough time. Sometimes near the end of a book or throughout, the author starts to subvert tropes and surprise you with different things, with reveals. That's also another reason why I try not to DNF books in the middle or books specifically. I try to you know, finish the book, see what the author was intending to do from start to finish, and then just decide whether or not to continue. And you're still taking a gamble. Not every book is gonna be a hit, but you take less of a chance that way if you at least finish the book and decide then to continue or not with the series itself. Again, I do allow myself the ability to put down a book in the middle, but I try not to because you never know what's going to happen at the end of the book. And I kind of, I suffer from a little bit of FOMO. I want to know, you know, how something ends and I want to know, you know, people's reviews and opinions often reference the entire package as a whole. And so I want to sort of put that in context and finish the story and at least make up my own opinion. So it's rare that I put a book down in the middle or I start a book and I put it down. I usually try to at least finish the book. It's more the series that I decide not to continue with. Is rating a book ethically, morally okay? How much of a book, what percentage of a book is appropriate to have read before you're entitled to put a review out or a rating or whatever. I personally don't rate or review books that I don't finish completely. I just don't think it's necessarily fair to the author. I want to give the author a chance to do what they set out to do. And sometimes some of the most rewarding reading experiences come from reading the book front to back because a lot happens near the end that puts a lot of things in context or reveals things or ties into the earlier parts of the story. So some of the best reading experiences I've had have come from reading a book and then getting more satisfied near the end. And so I don't think it's necessarily fair because that can be a strategy, that can be a deliberate thing. And sometimes the author takes longer to do what they intended to. And so if you're not hooked at the beginning, if you're not interested, if you're not immersed, if you're not invested, sometimes that can change throughout the journey of a book. And so I don't think it's necessarily fair to an author to jump ship. Now, if you're not enjoying yourself, there's no there's no sense in suffering through a book, absolutely. But if you are going to rate or review a book, I think it's more fair to the author if you finish the book before putting out an opinion. So while I think it's absolutely okay to put a book down, save yourself time, save yourself the suffering, the heartache, whatever. If you know you won't like it, put it down. I'm okay with that. But I don't think if you do, you should be rating or reviewing it. That could be a hot take, but it's just my opinion. Is there a part in a book? Is there a percentage after which it's more appropriate to give a rating or a review to a book that you didn't finish? I would say, like I just mentioned, I don't think you should, but if you're going to maybe 50%, I feel like if you've read half a book, you're allowed to have an opinion and you're allowed to have an opinion no matter what. But I would just be cautious and I and I love when people put out ratings or reviews and they say DNF at 50% so people know to take that review, that opinion, that rating with a grain of salt. It's lovely to know when a reviewer has or hasn't finished the book because it really, you know, that can sway someone's opinion on whether or not to pick up that same book. So my view and my opinion on this whole thing is that DNFing is completely okay. You should never feel guilty to DNF a book. Time is very precious. Just know that there are pros and cons and there's a risk to DNFing a book if you DNF in the middle or at the beginning or whatever. Sometimes authors just need a little bit more time to round out the characters and the world and the story, add context, reveal things, tie things into the beginning. And some of the more enjoyable experiences I've had have been a little bit rocky at the start and things ramp up, things build up. And by the end, it makes the journey worthwhile and really makes me grateful I didn't give up near the beginning, really ties in everything and makes the experience, uh, putting it in a different under a different lens. It really actually, some of those experiences have been really worthwhile. So just know that there are risks DNFing, um, but it's okay to do that. I do think if you do DNF a book, you know, 
it's probably better not to rate or review. I do think that's a little bit unfair, but if you do feel compelled to write a review or rating, like often, you know, we do, uh, I do think it's pretty good if you qualify that and say that you've DNF'd at a certain percentage. I think that's more fair to readers and people looking at that review also to the authors and it can add a little bit of context and you can take that review with a grain of salt and make up your own opinion. Um, I try not to DNF books. I do. I'm allowing myself more leniency to do that as I get older and as I read more and as I have more to read and less time to read, I'm getting a little bit more okay with DNFing. But part of me is a little bit worried about DNFing too early. So I'm trying to just know myself, know what works for me, know what doesn't. I'm getting pretty good with that. And uh, I feel like the, the, the few amount of DNFs that I have are pretty safe bets that that was the right decision. So let me know in the comments, do you DNF, do you not? What are your rules? Do you rate and review books that you DNF? Do you try not to DNF books? Are you more okay with just stopping in the middle of the series? Let me know down below. This is just a discussion video, just a, you know, curious what you guys think. That was my opinion because uh, again, I had a book that I put down, not sure if I'm gonna pick it back up. I DNF'd it very quickly because of writing style. And I'm thinking to myself, was that the right decision? So I'm curious what you guys think. That's it for me for now. I'll catch you guys real soon on the next video.